I'm Senator Karen Main, the Utah Senate Democratic leader. When my fellow legislators and I took the oath of office, we swore to support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Utah. Our charge is to protect and defend the rights of the people who call the state their home and to listen to their voices as we govern. And yet, there are far too many elected officials who disregard the voices of Utahns. It's no wonder that so many Utahns have become cynical and discouraged about the government in the state. I am proud to serve with my fellow Democratic legislators who do listen to the people. Every day that we serve, we strive to make sure that the voices of all Utahns are heard within these halls. As Democrats, we value our working families and the jobs that help support them. Utahns work hard and deserve to receive fair compensation and benefits for their labor. Utah's working families are the engine that keeps the state running, and we are dedicated to support them by promoting fair wages and workplace protections that keep our working men and women safe from harm. We also believe that supporting our young people to learn skilled trades and other professions is critical to our future. These investments in education provide the stability and wage young people need to lead and thrive in a successful career. I'm Representative Brian King, the Democratic leader of the Utah House of Representatives. As Democrats, we believe in empowering people over special interests. The Utah Constitution contains the phrase, all political power is inherent in the people. In the past year, Democrats have continued to fight on the side of the people of this state, defending their right to their constitutionally guaranteed political power. When voters use their authority to fully expand Medicaid in order to provide affordable access to quality health care for thousands of Utahns, we listened. When voters used that same power to make medical cannabis legal, we listened. And just last month, when the state's leaders passed a tax bill that increased the sales tax on food and slashed $160 million from our education fund, we again listened to the people of this state and all voted no. As we enter 2020, we will continue to be your voice on the Hill. We will continue to fight for your interests not special interests. One of the most vital aspects of keeping political power in the hands of the people will be fair and equitable redistricting after the 2020 census. You felt so strongly about this that you passed an initiative in 2018 to establish an independent commission to propose new boundaries when redistricting occurs next year. That is as it should be. Voters should choose their representatives, not the other way around. As 2021 approaches, there may be attempts to water down or even eliminate the role of the independent commission. We will remain vigilant and pledge to continue fighting for you, the people who elected us to serve. I am Senator Luz Escamilla. We are fortunate to live in a beautiful, dynamic, and diverse state, home to over three million people from every ethnic, religious, and cultural background imaginable. But with Utah's attractiveness, comes the challenge of ensuring that our state grows in a way that is sustainable. Utah faces a homeless crisis of a dire magnitude, the impacts of which are being felt in communities across the Wasatch Front and now even in Southern Utah. The causes of this crisis are complex and numerous, but a key element is a severe lack of affordable housing in our state. This year, we will propose solutions to address the issue of homelessness and to partner with cities across our state to ensure that Utah is prepared to address the needs of our most vulnerable communities, individuals and families experiencing homelessness. Addressing homelessness is a challenge that will require significant effort and a great deal of collaboration between the state and local governments, as well as between public and private entities. We Democrats applaud those private entities and individuals who have stepped up to help solve this problem. And we hope that others will do the same. That is the Utah way. From the days of the pioneers to this moment, Utahns have come together to tackle our biggest challenges. We believe that Utah is up to this undertaking. Democrats also believe in building a sustainable infrastructure that includes investing in affordable housing, 
increasing capacity for clean energy generation and transmission, addressing increasing waste management challenges, and ensuring that our transportation system is up to the task of keeping Utah moving in the coming decade and beyond. I'm Representative Carol Spackman Moss. While Utah is a land of stunning natural resources, our children are actually our greatest resource. Democrats believe in investing in our children to ensure that they have the necessary foundation to live healthy and productive lives. As a former teacher of many years at Olympus High School, I've seen firsthand the impact of a solid educational foundation for our children. The tax bill passed in December's special session took $160 million from Utah's education fund while also raising sales tax on food. My colleagues and I were united in opposing this bill. Just like your household budget, a state's budget is a statement of its priorities and values. If Utah truly values our children, then dramatically increasing funding for public education is the way to show it, including increasing access to after-school and early childhood programs proven to keep kids safe and get them started with a strong foundation for success. Utah currently ranks 51st in the nation in per-pupil student funding. This is unacceptable. It is a credit to the dedicated teachers and families of this state that most of our students still manage to be successful given the limited resources and large class sizes. But Utah cannot remain competitive unless we take real and lasting action to invest in the future of our children. I am Representative Angela Romero. Fairness is a core value of Utahns. Democrats believe in equal opportunity for all. This is at the heart of what drives our work to ensure that everyone has a fair shot and a level playing field on which to build their lives. Women in Utah face the worst pay gap in the nation, and it has been getting worse. Utah women now earn less than 70 cents for every dollar earned by their male counterpart. This should be unacceptable to every Utah, regardless of their gender. We must do better. And this session, we will be proposing solutions to close this shameful disparity facing Utah women in every profession. Beyond the gender wage gap is the growing issue of income inequality. As Utah booms, the benefits of that success are not reaching everyone. The middle class continues to shrink and those with low incomes struggle just to make ends meet while expenses continue to rise. Democrats will continue to fight to even the playing field in order to ensure that growth benefits all. I'm Senator Janie Iwamoto. As Utah grows, we face ever increasing environmental challenges. Democrats believe in clean air, water, and energy, and we will be proposing solutions to meet these challenges head on. Air quality is no longer a problem that only affects the Wasatch Front, but communities across our state. We must take action to reduce air pollution, especially fine particulates, coming from a wide range of sources. A 2018 partnership between Brigham Young University in Provo and Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute in Salt Lake City found that heavy particulate pollution sharply increases the risk of heart attacks and chest pain. A Harvard University study from the same year found that even short-term exposure to high levels of particulate air pollution causes a noticeable increase in deaths of individuals over the age of 65. No parent should have to watch their child struggle to breathe due to respiratory illness caused by poor air quality. Air pollution is one of the single greatest challenges we face in the coming decade, and Democrats will continue to propose common sense measures to clear our air. We also know that Utah's water supply is precious and limited. This year, we will propose solutions to protect our water sources and to work with both rural and urban stakeholders to help maintain the water supply that is the lifeblood of our growing state. Utah is a state blessed with many gifts, the greatest of which are the people who call it home. It is the combined industry, compassion, resourcefulness, and energy of our population that have led to our state's success. Utah is a great place to live, 
because the people of this state have made it so. In the past month, we have seen voters turn out in force to sign the petition demanding the referendum to have your say on the tax bill passed in special session. In every part of the state, you have raised your voices and demanded to be heard. While the state's leaders have decided to repeal the tax bill, the voters should neither back down nor lower their guard. As we close, we appeal to you to remain engaged and involved in the governance of the state. In the past year, I have had the fortune to hear from you in communities from St. George to Brigham City and from Richfield to Roosevelt. Though the topic was tax reform, I heard stories from so many Utahns, farmers, teachers, homemakers, ranchers, entrepreneurs, and so many more. Each of you who came to the town halls brought with you your experiences, your perspectives, and your worries. It was an honor to listen to you and learn from you. We pledge to continue listening and learning in the year to come. I invite you to remain part of the conversation. Utah is at its best when people of the state speak up and share their views with their elected officials. Our message tonight to you is a start, not the end of the conversation. We encourage you to follow us on social media and visit the state's legislative website to learn more about the process and to be engaged in what is happening during the 2020 general session. Thank you for watching. We hear you and we will continue to ensure that your voices are heard in the halls of the Capitol. Thank you and good night.